shebang. I mean, I, I think that that is dangerous, but it's dangerous in a different way. And, and it's also dangerous in a more consistent and, I, I would say, historically uh, precedented way. I mean, the, the fact is that politicians okay. have all... Okay, no, 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 Ben, no, okay. Ben, no, no, Ben, no, no. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for watching Power to the Power, where we are committed to an intellectual integrity and a moral honesty. I'm your host, Superior, and once again, thank you for watching. Now, in this video, I want to break down probably one of the most talked about but yet mishandled conversations. And Mr. Ben Shapiro and Pierce Morgan is going to do a wonderful job of demonstrating this for me. But being woke, this word is, I mean, the, the Republicans did an amazing job of hijacking this, this word and turning it into something that is not correctly portrayed. Being woke is it or, or at least before my generation like i'm i'm an 80s baby babies i'm pretty sure this term was used even before that but to be woke simply means to be aware to have like a hyper awareness vigilance of a, a topic a situation or just like the world around you that's it and and, and that should be a good thing right like I am now awake, awakened of, you know, uh, my uh, spirituality, you know what I'm saying? Like now I, I see, you know, uh, what's beneath the surface. I'm able to see the details in, in the finer prints of, you know, the society uh, around me. That's a good thing, right? Like to educate yourself is to awaken yourself because once you didn't know now you know you're awakened in whatever topic or situation that you're talking about but once again we're going to watch mr ben shapiro and pierce morgan just totally forget that and flip this into a weird conversation and we're going to only like watch like five minutes of it because it's once they kind of switch the definition of this everything else they're talking about is pointless because now they're talking on their own terms and their own definition and just going off the rails so let's go ahead and have this conversation we've had our, our kiss and makeup interview after that but I, I i think what was pretty interesting to me 2016 so seven years ago now you tweeted a, a tweet this is your pinned tweet to this date simply said facts don't care about your feelings and if any phrase, I think, perfectly epitomizes this woke era that we have somehow stumbled into, it's that. Because the woke brigade put feelings before facts. How do we get there? Well, I mean, I'm, culturally speaking, I think that what happened is that the value of subjective authenticity became the core to pretty much everybody. So the, the idea of individualism was taken to its logical extreme, which was, I'm so important and everything I feel is so important that I can ignore the rest of reality. And in fact, reality is an imposition on me. Institutions, rules, roles, the rules of the road, all that sort of stuff, it's an imposition on who I truly am. And in order for me to be actually free, I, I mean, have to speak- I mean, that, that can't be true? Like institutions in a world around you can't be, a I don't come on my truth now you know as i've said and you've said there's no such thing as my truth right. right there's your opinion and then there's the truth but as soon as you start speaking in terms of my truth as soon as you start saying well there's how i feel about the world and how i feel about the world is the core of me what that also does it means that other people are aggressing on you when they disagree with you mm. because obviously a shared reality means that we can disagree about things out here but you know we sort of as human beings are intact. But the moment that you start to identify your truth with the truth, then anybody attacking your truth is attacking you as a human being. And I think that that's where we've gone, is, is this movement away from, we're having a political debate, but again, we can go out and have a drink <laughs> afterward because we are, we are not the political debate. The political debate's a different thing. To my politics are who I am, or right. my feelings about who I am, or my feelings about the world, that's the thing that matters more than anything else. And what's true? Okay, so... I understand what he's saying. I, okay, okay. I understand his premise uh, on what he's trying to deliver here. 
But one thing I, I think he he either doesn't know or does is not aware of or just doesn't care. Some people's positions in politics regarding legislation, laws, bills, whatever the case is, can impact a person so much that it does become personal. I mean, we can go back to uh, redlining and Jim Crow and black black codes. Like, I'm pretty sure that impacted them so so much that it had to be personal. So I mean, just because you can have this political debate and this political uh, 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 argument with someone and then just be like, all right, that was fun. Let's have a drink. Like some people is personal, especially if they lived, uh, 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 you know, for example, in, in these impoverished areas and they find a way out of it. And now they want to help their communities on a political scale, which I think is probably one of the best ways to do it. It's personal to them. They can't just, it's, this is not just a, a, a show. This is not just something that they throw on their, you know, activist hat and, you know, you know, do this, you know, grand performance and then just take it off. And now they're, they're separate from that. For some people like myself, this is what made me, you know what I'm saying? Like it's who I am to be that voice, to be in the, the political uh, 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 arena and have these conversations. So, yeah, I, I mean, I wish I could just pretend and just be like, all right, that was fun. Now go back to my real life. Like, nah. I mean, I remember this, we're going to come to them later, sadly, but Meghan and Harry, when they went on <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, and she started talking constantly about my truth, and Oprah was endorsing your truth and everything. I was like, I'm living in a sort of mad world where truth is no longer factual. It's just whatever you're feeling in any given moment. It seems such a perverse thing for a democratic <coughs> society that you move away from fact-based, from science, whatever it may be, to just feelings dominating Okay, it's it's weird how how they keep disregarding feelings. Like I understand opinions are not facts. I get it. I understand you have to check your emotions a lot of the time because you know we're all emotional beings. That's just who we are in by nature. Sometimes you gotta tame it, you gotta control it and pursue the facts. But name one activist that changed history that didn't act on emotion. Don't worry, I'll wait. What what was that? Yeah, exactly. Not one. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton, Frederick Douglass, Nat Turner. It's so many great activists. Don't name some off-brand person that nobody really knows. Great activists act on emotion because emotion is what gets things done. And, and yes, Ben Shapiro is correct. Facts doesn't care about your feelings, but facts without emotion is worthless. If you can have the facts, if you can have all the facts in the world, if you are able to retain as many facts as you can regarding whatever topic you want to talk about, and that's all you have, you are worthless. You're like a phone. You're essentially a phone. If all you're spewing is, well, uh, black on black crime is uh, 86% and white on white crime is 92%, and it's like, okay. Let's dig a little deeper. Uh, uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? Dig a little deeper. All I know is just numbers and facts and analytics and, 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 and data. It's like a human being with emotion and able to empathize and sympathize and connect with the underlining of those uh, uh, facts and data. That's how solutions are brought up is because you can 
see the facts, and now let's dig a little deeper and figure out some solutions. So, yeah, come on. We, you need more than just facts to actually be a, a great leader, I should say. A culture. And if you defy those feelings, you are instantly branded the enemy and you must be destroyed. Well, there's no conversation to be had, right? I can't have a conversation about your feelings. You're feeling your feelings. There's no way for me to dissuade you from you can't deny my feelings correct i can't deny <laughs> i can deny the facts that you bring to the table but the problem is once that becomes irrelevant then we're just at an impasse there's no more conversation to be had how big a problem is it that at the same time simultaneously i think you've had the rise of very popular so okay so <sighs> let me see like donald trump boris johnson in the uk facts be for me to there's no conversation to be had right i can't have a conversation about your feelings you're feeling your feelings there's no way for me to dissuade you from you can't deny my feelings Co correct i can't deny <laughs> i can deny the facts that you bring to the table but the problem is once that becomes irrelevant then we're just at an impasse there's no more conversation to be okay so this reminds me of a conversation he had with neil degrasse tyson okay it's it is one thing to have facts and data data and analytics whatever you want to call it to improve a situation to get solutions okay i get it but you can use facts you can use these th this data in such a way to where it does harm people now i i can't say it as best as he so let's go ahead and just take a real quick snippet look on how neil degrasse tyson bodied Ben Shapiro in this short clip, and we'll be right back. Take a watch. One of those areas is, is the area of transgenderism. Uh, the, the argument that is typically made by gender theorists is that gender is entirely separate from sex. Uh, you, you've seen the argument made that it makes no difference on average if men are stronger than women are, and that if we were to allow transgender women to compete with non-transgender women, then this would somehow not disadvantage biological women. And this seems to me absolutely ascientific, that if we're actually going to have a discussion about gender and sex, that that should be based in data, which suggests that mammals are, in fact, binary in terms of their sex, unless you have intersex birth defects, typically, or genetic defects. I'm happy to opine on this. Um, this only matters because today, we segregate most, nearly all sports by gender. Otherwise, why do we even give a shit? <laughs> What's, what someone identifies with? So this is, we live in a free country and with consenting adults and people free expression of who and what they are. Man, I don't love what I agree with you. I, I think it, it does matter what you teach children. Saying, it, I think the concern is if you study some topic that's a hot button topic and you bring scientific methods and tools to it, there, we don't trust, I'm, I'm interpreting here, I think we as a society don't trust that people in charge in a free country won't try to legislate something that will constrict people's freedoms in the face of that information. I think that's the fear. All right, so just watching that, it's like, and that was like, I believe like a year and some change ago. With that kind of information, it's good to know. But once you start trying to restrict people's freedoms, that's when it becomes a problem. Because then if you agree to that, this ain't the land of the free. Because then now you're restricting people of their freedoms to want to dress up like a woman want to call themselves a woman i don't give a damn if you want to dress i don't care if you want me to call you shirley it's not going to hurt me i'm still going to be confident in myself i have a lot of self-respect i have a lot i am confident in me it's not going to change me calling you shirley i don't care honestly you know what i'm saying so it's just weird how ben shapiro didn't learn anything having that amazing conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you defy those feelings, you are instantly branded 
the enemy and you must be destroyed. Well, there's no conversation to be had, right? I can't have a conversation <laughs> about your feelings. You're feeling your feelings. There's no way for me to dissuade you from You can't deny my feelings. Correct. I can't deny, <laughs> I can deny the facts that you bring to the table, but the problem is once that becomes irrelevant. I think we already. Time, Boris Johnson in the UK uh, and others who play pretty fast and loose with the truth. That you have people who say, well, hang on, you talk about the sanctity of truth, but you've got these political leaders, US presidents, British prime ministers, where they don't seem to care about the truth. They just bumble through with whatever suits them from day to day. How <coughs> dangerous is that to the whole shebang? I mean, I, I think that that is dangerous, but it's dangerous in a different way. And, and it's also dangerous in a more consistent and, I, I would say, historically uh, precedented way. I mean, the, the fact is that politicians... Okay, have no, 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 Ben, no, okay. Ben, no. No. Ben. No. No. It is not. He's he's brushing it off as if it's some sort of like, I mean, like politics, like, you know, they're they're supposed to lie. Like they've been lying forever. Like it's just kind of in their nature, in their job description. Like they're supposed to lie to the um, American people because uh, that's just what they're supposed to do. And that's kind of like how history has been uh, revolving around it. So we're supposed to be OK. Ben, no, no, no. That is not OK. That's all he had to say was like, that is an issue we need to solve. It is not OK. <laughs> Politicians. Why, why do I got to explain this to you? Why do simple old me have to explain this to you? It is not okay. Just like it's not okay for people, you know, uh, uh, for your example, um, to look at facts and then want to have their own opinions morphed into facts that disregard actual facts. But it's okay for politicians to do that because... I mean, they've been doing it forever. Oh, Jesus Christ, like, come on, come on. Always fib to us. I mean, there, there's nothing right. new about politicians saying things that are not true from from LBJ to to George W. Bush to to Donald Trump and Barack Obama. I mean, like literally every politician. And Joe Biden. I mean, yeah, Joe, to, to President Biden. Bumpers, yeah. right? you, see, you see this all the time. So the idea of a politician not telling the truth or shading the truth in particular ways, that that's not what's new. I think what's new is where people are presented with data and their immediate response isn't, let me bring you some data that rebuts that data, but I don't even have to look at your data because your motivation is bad. <coughs> this philosophy... How, how, how dangerous is it, though, that oh. we've also become incredibly tribal? I think more... Okay, so, okay. Check this out. All right, I, th I think that's... Once again, if, if you want to watch this whole video, go ahead and watch it. Like, I can't... It's... it's I, I have a, a certain tolerance of and it, and it it's been like almost five minutes. Once I reach five minutes, I start uh, foaming at the mouth and I start like, you know, shaking and stuff because just the just the ignorance of this is just ridiculous. So what the right loves to do, and just to kind of uh, uh, answer this question here, the right doesn't have these conversations and present facts and and their position and then not everybody operates in feeling so when they just say you know uh democrats just let it just you know uh feelings over facts and that's a, like no reasonable understandable people will understand opinions and facts are not the same but what the problem is is when you have these conversations like the one of the best conversations that everybody in their mama seem to want to always talk about is black on black crime. A Republican will say black on black crime is 76 percent. And that's the reason why, um, you know, uh, we need more police funding. And then somebody on the opposing side will say, you're correct. Black on black crime is high. And we need to address that. But adding police funding is not a solution that has been tried before for decades. And it's been shown that less than 1% uh, is actually uh, uh, benefiting these 
areas. So what we should do is maybe move some of the funds around, add more funds, do whatever you want, but into these communities that uh, uh, contribute to high crime rates, uh, uh, jobs, low paying jobs, um, uh, opportunities, education. Maybe if we add some money to these areas, maybe not uh, uh, cut the police uh, 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 budget, maybe just a little bit into these uh, social programs that has been shown to work for, you know, about 24%, which is true. I'm going to be labeled woke for saying that. And yes, that doesn't make sense. But if we notice how the Republican Party loves to hijack words, and even if it doesn't make sense, like critical race theory, they don't even know what it is, but they just associate with every nonsense thing that they can think of and throw it under being woke. You want police reform, defund the police, you're woke. If you want to uh, talk about uh, reparations, you're woke. If you think that uh, uh, trans people and LGBTQ people should just be left alone, you're woke. Like, that's how the right response to that. So it's weird how Ben Shapiro is just like, well, you know, just, just the Democrats are the ones that just shut down and just want to uh, always argue their feelings and their opinions and disregard the facts. While we're sitting over here disregarding everything that people are saying and just label labeling them being woke. And that's the end of the discussion. It's like when you call somebody uh, racist, you're having a, a conversation about race, uh, inequality or whatever the situation is. And as soon as someone calls that person racist, the conversation is pretty much done. It shuts down because that word carries weight. You know what I'm saying? And the, the easiest way to shut off a conversation is just to start calling people racist. Just like with being woke, I've been in plenty of conversations and as soon as they call me woke, that's like their way to exit out of that conversation without having to follow up with answers or other data or, or another perspective. They call me woke and they can, you know, scapegoat out of the conversation. Come on, everybody does it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just weird how this is just a Democrat problem, but Republicans are just always just trying to have conversations and talk about facts. Like, come on, Ben, you're not tricking nobody. So once again, if I'm wrong, let me know in the, conversa uh, in the comments down below and let's have that conversation. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to join the conversation by subscribing. Make sure to tune in next time. And like always, Power to you, power to me, power to the people, power to the pod.